Maria, can I talk to you for a moment? My son isn't replying to my messages. Has he told you anything? Is he home? It's getting late in the night. Good evening. How are you? It's been a while since we met. My husband is taking a bath right now. All right, I guess that's why he's not replying to my messages and calls. Tell him to call me back when he gets out. Of course. By the way, it's already been two years since you two got married. How's your cafe going? Any plans for your future? Thanks for checking on me. Fortunately, my business is going pretty well. Many people come to eat at my cafe. Every day is a busy day. We've got a lot of regular customers, and we're also coming up with ways to attract new customers as well. The seats are full most of the time. What? I'm not asking if your business is going well or not. I'm asking you when you're planning to close down your restaurant. I don't plan to close down. We're doing really great. There's no reason to close down. And many people visit us, feeling excited to taste our menu. We put a lot of effort in coming up with new seasonal menus, and they're one of the most popular dishes at our cafe. Even so, I don't see why you won't close down. Are you aware of your age? You're 32. That's about a third of your life. How about you become a housewife and support your husband? You're too old to pursue your hobby. I think it's about time to focus on your housework. It's not a hobby. I do enjoy working at my cafe, but it's a business. I'm a cafe owner. I manage the cafe as my job. But isn't it hard when both of you work? My son has a job and you also insist that you have a job as a cafe owner. I doubt you have enough time to complete the housework at home. My husband is very cooperative. We work together to do things around the house. We're managing fine, so I don't think you have to worry about us. We're dividing our roles and we each have different chores to complete. I think we're working very efficiently. Don't you understand? I'm telling you not to make my son do housework. He is tired from a long day of work. I'm so sorry for him. He shouldn't have to do anything at home. But that applies to me, too. I also have a job, and I feel tired after a day of work. We try to support each other as much as we can. My son makes enough money to support both of you. I don't see why you have to work outside, too. I wouldn't call that efficient. You might think you have a successful business, but it's not easy to manage a cafe on your own for a long period of time. Your business would face a downfall soon enough. Have you thought of what you would do when you get pregnant? You'll have to close down. You can't work when you're pregnant. It's better if you can just become a housewife to look after your children at home. No, I won't close down. I already have plans for that. I'll work for as long as I can, and I'll ask my co-owner, who's in charge of the cooking, to cover for my responsibilities for some time while I take my maternity leave. Plus, my friends from vocational school have my back. They're willing to help me whenever I'm short of hands. Even so, you never know what would happen in the future. I bet you don't serve any decent food at your cafe. Probably just expensive with a mediocre taste. People will soon be tired of the menu and would stop visiting your cafe. I advise you to start facing the reality. What if you had to borrow money in the future to support your business? That's going to be awful. I know the risks as a business owner, so I'm trying my best to make my business successful. I try to plan ahead. Thanks for your advice, though. It reminds me of how risky it can be. And what are your plans for giving birth? When are you planning to get a baby? You're getting older. You have to start preparing now or it would be too late. What would you do if you can't get pregnant because of your age? Having a baby is a blessing. It's not something we can control. Think about your age. The time limit is just ahead of you. You'll soon be too old to get pregnant. It's probably because you're busy working at the cafe. I bet you don't make enough time to spend with my son. I do make time to spend with my husband, and I don't think that I'm old yet. We don't have to rush, in my opinion. Then why are you still not pregnant after being married for two years? I can't believe it. We are taking our time and doing things at our own pace. I'm very worried about my son's future. You're making me very worried because you're taking things too slowly. 
I'm sorry, but we made our future plans as a couple. After having some discussions with my husband, we know what we're doing. I hope you can leave us alone and respect our decisions. We're compromising and finding our own style as a couple. I guess there's no point in telling you anything. You don't seem to listen to me at all. Remember, I've been living longer than you and know what's best to do in life. I do respect your advice and opinions as well. Thanks for being considerate. No need to flatter me like that. I know you don't feel that way. I really don't understand why my son married a stubborn girl like you. It gives me a headache. I'm sorry if I'm the reason for your headache. If you're sorry, how about you do what I tell you? You'll soon regret not listening to me. I'm warning you. <laughs> Maria, do you have some time now? Are you still working? No, I just finished preparing for tomorrow. I have some time now. Oh, I see. I didn't know your cafe closed this early. We don't serve dinner at my cafe, so we close pretty early. By the way, your friend visited my cafe today. She was really nice. Yes, I know that. That's why I texted you. I wanted to make sure. I hope you weren't rude to her. I don't think I was. She told me she loved our menu. I was really glad to hear that. And she even promised to visit again. She was a very sweet person. I see. Did she complain about anything? I hope she wasn't just lying to make me feel good. No, she didn't say much. She just told me she enjoyed the food. But she's the type to think all of the food she tasted was good. So don't be too happy about her advice. She would still say it was delicious even if it was awful. I'm just glad she had a good experience at the cafe. She left with a smile, and that's what I hope for most. And she tried our most popular menu. I'm pretty confident that she liked it. But actually, she told me one thing that made me feel concerned. She told me that your co-owner was a man. I never knew that. Yes, I work with my friend who was my junior at the restaurant I used to work for. I might not have told you that before. He dreams of having his own restaurant one day, so he's learning some necessary skills as he works for my cafe. I don't know if that's a good thing or not, to be honest. You spend time with him a lot, and you two are the only ones working at the cafe with no other employees. He's a man, you know. Don't tell me you're cheating on my son. Excuse me? What are you talking about? You can't be serious. He's just my co-worker. There's nothing more than that. It's no big deal. You can't just be suspicious of all the men I meet at work. But I don't know. You do everything together at work, right? Something looks suspicious here. We're serious about our job. We're too busy working to think about having an affair. You know that I'm married to my husband. I love him from the bottom of my heart. And just to make things clear, my coworker is also dating someone else. There's no way we're having an affair. Some people still decide to flirt even when they're seeing someone, so I don't think that would prove your innocence. Do I look like I'm that kind of person to you? I'll never do that, and he'll never do that as well. I feel like you're looking down on us as people who would easily cheat on their partners. Our only goal is to serve good food and make our customers happy. We're taking this business very seriously. And we also have other employees at the cafe who work as waiters. We're rarely alone in the cafe. There's nothing to be suspicious about. I respect him as a coworker, and he respects me as the owner of the cafe. There's nothing more to our relationship. I doubt it. From my perspective, it seemed like you didn't want to close down because you'll have to end things with him. You'll lose your opportunity to spend time with your secret lover. I didn't understand why you didn't want to close down, but now everything makes sense. Please stop thinking that way. It's not true, and it's rude to both of us. Oh, are you angry because I found out your little secret? Hm. No. My husband also knows that I work with him. He trusts me and knows how important he is to me as my co-worker. He's actually visited our house several times. We sometimes invite him over to have dinner with us. What did you just say? You invited him over? Yes, I invited him to come visit me and my husband for dinner. My husband is also close to him, and we're all really good friends. 
There's really nothing going on between us. I don't understand why you're so worried about me having an affair with him. Have you ever thought about how my son might be feeling about you and your co-worker? My husband is very supportive about it. Oh, so my son approves of you having an affair with another man. I guess I won't have to wait long until you get a divorce with my son. What? I meant that he's supportive about my business. He understands that I respect my co-worker as my business partner. But if you're so caught up in your job, I bet my son will soon get tired of you. He would want a better wife who would care for him more as a supportive housewife. You're starting to feel like you're better than him as a successful business owner, no? I'm telling you, you'll soon realize what a large mistake you made for not caring about the household enough. I care about my family a lot. My husband means a lot to me. I value both my job and my family. I care for both. But compared to a housewife, you aren't doing enough, and I know you're aware of that. Yes, I'm aware of that, but... But we have our own ways of supporting each other as partners. We don't have to fit into the stereotypes. Let's say you were a professional chef at one of the best restaurants in the country. I would keep my mouth shut if you had such a prestigious career. But you're just a normal cafe owner who does business as a hobby. I don't want you to ruin my son's life just because you enjoy being a cafe owner. I'm taking my business very seriously. Can I ask a favor? Could you please try visiting my cafe once? We don't serve those ready-made meals at our cafe. We're very serious about our menu and take a lot of time to plan, cook, and serve. You would understand how much effort we put into this business if you can come visit us at the cafe. Do you think I have enough time for that? Also, I only eat high-quality food. I don't consume any of those fast foods. I would never be satisfied with your menu. There's no need for me to taste it. Okay, my cafe has a great reputation, so I am confident you would have a good experience visiting my cafe. Let me make this clear. I don't approve of you having a job when my son already makes enough money to support both of you. I can't accept how you make my son do housework after he comes home from a long day of work. I don't think someone like you who brings home trouble deserves to be with my son. I hope you realize how much your hobby affects the people around you negatively. Do you know how much of a burden you are to my son? It would be ideal if you can just break up with my son. <coughs> Maria, have you opened your cafe yet? It's still early in the morning. It's not open yet. We're still preparing for our lunch menu. I have a favor to ask you. Can I talk to you for a moment? Of course. I would be willing to help if the favor is within my capabilities. You're the only one who's capable of doing so. You're the only one I can ask. My friend's birthday is coming up, so I'm planning to have a birthday party for her. Well, that's very sweet of you. Right? I know. And I thought I might do it at your cafe. Is it possible to reserve the whole cafe for the party? Really? Are you sure you want to have the party at my cafe? Yes. Do you remember the friend of mine who visited your cafe the other day? She was the one who suggested that your cafe might be the best place to hold the party. I see. Well, I'm glad she thought that way. So, I want to make a reservation for next Thursday. There will be about 30 of us. How about I reserve the whole cafe for three hours? Is that possible? 30 people? Hmm, uh, let me check. Do you have any preferences about what you would want to be served at the party? I'll take note if you have anything in particular that you want us to serve. Let me think. Maybe a simple lunch course would be nice. I would prefer fish as the main dish rather than meat. It would be great if the price is under $50 for one person. Do you think you can do that? Okay, let me write that down. But if you're aiming for a simple lunch course, you might want to drop the price down a bit more. Don't worry, we grandmas have a lot of money. When are we supposed to spend all the money we saved while we were still young? Okay, if you insist so. I hope you can check with me after you decide on the menu. Text me again after you finalize what you would be serving at the party. 
I just want to make sure it aligns with what I asked you. Of course. It's a great opportunity for me to prove that I'm taking this business very seriously. I'll do my very best, so please look forward to it. Yes, I'm actually excited to try your food. Your cafe has a pretty good reputation in the neighborhood, so your menu must be great. I've heard that your cafe was published in a magazine the other day. How wonderful. If your cafe is so good that it was published in a magazine, I thought I might give it a taste as well. Thank you. I'm glad you changed your mind. I'll try my best to meet your expectations and definitely surprise you and your friends with some great food. <coughs> Maria, good morning. I assume you're starting to get ready for the party? Yes, that's right. Actually, there's something I want to apologize to you about. Can I talk to you for a moment? I would like to cancel today's reservation. What? Unfortunately, the friend who I planned the birthday party for told me that she wouldn't be able to come. Apparently, she caught a cold. I have no other choice than to cancel. I never expected her to get sick on her birthday. I'm sorry to ruin your plans today. <laughs> I bet all the ingredients you were prepared to serve 30 people would go to waste. You prepared to hold a party at your cafe today. <laughs> now that I canceled the reservation, it must be a huge loss for your cafe. No, it's okay. I haven't done anything to prepare for it, so it's alright. What? You haven't been preparing for my reservation today? Yes, that's right. Didn't I tell you that I wanted to reserve the whole cafe today? I asked you to prepare a lunch course for 30 people. Yes, you did tell me that. But I knew that you wouldn't be having the birthday party at my cafe, so I didn't prepare for it. I know that you're planning to go see a play today at the theater. I assume that's correct. Why do you know about my plans? I heard about it from your friend. Who? Don't you remember that friend of yours who visited my cafe a while ago? She really seemed to love my cafe, and she's now a regular customer. She visits almost every day. I'm very thankful for her support. Really? I never knew. Yes, she's a very sweet person. And do you remember what you told me about her? You said that she was the one who gave you advice about holding the birthday party at my cafe. So I figured I should thank her for that. But then she didn't understand what I was talking about and I realized that you were lying to me. What do you mean? How do you know it's a lie? Don't blame me. You, you can't be sure that everything is a lie. I actually didn't invite her to the party, so she wouldn't know. Oh, really? But you did cancel today's reservation, so all ended well. Lucky me. Nothing is well. What would you have done if I didn't cancel today's reservation? I bet you didn't prepare for today's reservation on purpose so that you could embarrass me in front of my friends. Do you know how evil you are? I don't care what you think about me. You're banned from my cafe. What did you just tell me? Your friends offered to help me do some research about you. Thanks to their help, I found out the truth. Research? For what? What truth did you find out? About whether the birthday party was actually planned or not. I found out that you were bragging to your friends about getting a ticket for the popular play schedule today. So I assumed that you pretended to make a reservation just to make me suffer. No, why would I ever do that? Then do you have proof? Can you prove your innocence? I would believe you if you can show me the invitations you sent to your friends for the birthday party. And I would apologize to you for not preparing for today's reservation. I don't have them with me anymore. I can't show them now then I guess you don't deserve my apology. Maria, what's with your attitude? I'm your mother-in-law. You ignored your mother-in-law's reservation, and you don't seem to regret anything. Do you even have common sense? I think you're the one without common sense. You're the one who's being unbelievable. I had some discussions about what to do in the future with your son, and we came to the decision that it might be best if we break relations with you. My husband would go see you in person to talk to you about this, so I hope you can have a talk with him directly. It's no big deal breaking relations with you. I never approved of you to be my daughter-in-law anyways. I don't really mind. It's not just me. My husband would also be breaking relations with you. What? Why would my son ever do that to me? 
He's had enough of your immature actions and came to the decision of breaking relations with you. He told me that he's been receiving countless messages from you telling him to get a divorce from me. He showed me the overwhelming amount of messages. It was creepy, actually. And he said you even called him during his work hours to pressure him about getting a divorce with me. You're disturbing him while working. How can you do that to your son? I didn't disturb him. It was just a casual talk between son and mother. It's not a big deal. But my husband was annoyed and exhausted from having to reply to your messages and calls. And I know you've been spreading bad rumors about me to the people around you. You are ruining my reputation, and that's a crime. If you continue doing so, we plan to hire a lawyer to deal with the case. We can't let this go on any longer. A lawyer? I think you're going overboard. It's unnecessary. You spread rumors about me cheating on my husband. When did I ever do that? Didn't I explain to you in detail the other day? I don't think I'm overreacting. I'm just trying to take the necessary steps. Okay, okay. I won't do that anymore. Is that enough for you? Yes, don't do that ever again. And we'll break relations with you so that we'll never see each other again. What? You're still angry? I just apologized to you. Both my husband and I would never forgive you for what you did. We hope we'll never see you again. Why are you so angry? What's the big deal? It's all because of you. How about you reflect on your actions for the past few years? And one of your friends' husbands owns a restaurant like me. You should know how lethal it is to cancel a reservation on the actual day. You should know better than this. All your friends seemed surprised to hear about what you were planning to do at my cafe. Hey, how many people know about this? About how I planned to cancel the reservation on purpose? Why would I know? I don't know how many friends you have. But as far as I know, many of your friends plan not to get in touch with you ever again, finding out about what kind of person you really are. Maria, I'm so sorry. I, I promise not to do it ever again. Yes, I don't think you deserve a second chance. If you did the same thing again, I will take the necessary steps and seek help from the experts. How about we end it peacefully this time? Uh, can you tell my friends that it was just a little fight between you and I? Uh, don't make it sound like I'm the villain. You know, I can't just lose my friends. You should tell them directly. I don't think it's my responsibility. If they really consider you as their friend, they'll probably be willing to hear the story from your perspective. Only if you weren't so rude to them on a daily basis. I wish you good luck in trying to convince them. I'm about to lose not only my son, but my friends as well. Don't you feel sorry for me? Why would I? You did worse things to me, remember? And I think you deserve it. To be honest, it's all the result of your actions. Let me apologize, Maria, please. I'm very sorry. Please forgive me. If you forgive me, I know everyone else would also understand. Let me make things clear. It's not like everything would go back to normal if you apologized to me. Think about how much trouble you're causing to your surroundings. Do you know how much of a burden you are to your friends and family? Your mean and evil actions, inconsiderate of the people around you, they all came back to you. <coughs> My husband had a talk with his mother, and they came to an agreement after a long discussion. My husband forbade her to come near our house in my cafe and also banned her from contacting both me and my husband in any way. In case of an emergency, my husband's sister would help us communicate with her mother. I'm glad she respects our decision and is willing to help us out. If she ever broke the rule again, we will definitely take legal action and bring the case to court. She suffered from shock after her friends left her and my husband decided to break relations with her. And apparently, she now barely goes outside and never leaves the house. She used to love to brag and badmouth others behind their back, so I guess her problematic personality caused people to cut relations with her. She wasn't the best person to hang out with, obviously. I hope she got a taste of her own medicine and would change her personality for the better. Hopefully, she reflects on her mistakes while she's at home. That would be what's best for her as well. After breaking relations with my mother-in-law, I've had a very busy but fulfilling life. 
My cafe is doing very well and many customers visit on a daily basis. It's all thanks to the people around me who supported me during my hard times. I can't thank them enough. I will never forget what they did for me and hopefully I get to return something to them as well. That's my goal for the future. I will live a happy life with my beloved husband and build a lovely family with him, spending the rest of our lives together as we support each other. Bonnie, are you there? Is everything all right with you? Are you eating properly? Like, actually having a decent meal every day? Hi, Lauren. Well, I'm all right as I can be. However, as for the food situation, I can't eat, but I don't have much of an appetite at the moment. I get what you mean, but no matter what the situation's like, you've got to eat something at least. So, just so you've got some energy to do things, especially now that you're carrying a child inside you, you need to feed the baby as well as yourself. I guess you're right. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to make you so worried, Lauren. It's okay. We can't help what's going on. It's really unfortunate. I never imagined anything like this could happen to this family. Why did it have to be my husband that went through something like this? We were talking about having a big family together and we were looking forward to so many things. It really is such a shame that this has happened to us. My brother's health hasn't always been the best, but I didn't imagine that he'd pass away at such a young age. What am I supposed to do without him now? He was my strength and now he's gone. I never thought my husband would lose his life at a time like this. How am I supposed to do this pregnancy without him? And on top of that, he'll never meet his baby. I'm sure you can't help but feel anxious about the whole situation and having to raise a child on your own. Maybe once you're about to give birth to your child, you could go back to your hometown for help? Yeah, that was the original plan we discussed together. I plan to return home for the birth as planned. Oh, okay. Look, I'm going to suggest something to you. Maybe you should move back in with your parents and live in their house. It's not a bad suggestion, but I've got this house here. There wouldn't be much point in living with my parents. But are you really going to live in the house and do everything all by yourself with a baby you need to take care of 24-7? Besides, the house will be way too big for just the two of you. It'll be too much to handle. But still, this is like a keepsake of my husband. We made a lot of memories in this house, and I don't think I'm ready to give that up yet. This is my home. I finally got to have it after all the hard work that's been put towards it. Of course, but you poor thing, though. Having to do this all by yourself? You'll probably have to go back to work after your maternity leave is over. You won't be able to work like you used to because of the baby. Even though you own such a lovely house, it costs money to maintain. You know that, right? But if I rented a different place, it would cost me money every month, and there are more worries when it comes to renting. I don't want to have to deal with noise issues or having neighbors complaining about my baby crying in the middle of the night. This house is the one my husband and I decided to buy together, and it means a lot to me. I have a lot of memories here. I, I can't just leave it. I don't feel like I can give it up and sell it to someone else. But who said anything about selling it to someone else, Bonnie? I'll take the house off your hands. You would want the house? I don't understand why you'd want it for yourself, though. Well, now that things have turned out like this, I think you should go back to your parents' house to get some help. It's really tough doing things on your own. You'd be completely alone. I will take on the responsibility of looking after the house. It's an important keepsake to my brother. I'm really grateful for your concerns, Lauren, but I still don't feel like giving up the house. It's mine as well. You do realize I'm thinking of you when I'm saying all these things, right? Owning a house is more difficult than you think, Bonnie. Do you know about taxes and that sort of thing? My husband and I have an FC who always takes care of us. If anything happens, then I'll go to them for advice. It's fine. FC? What's an FC? What do they do? Uh, it's short for financial consultant. They help us out with our money and what we need to pay for. Are you sure they're the right person to go to? You're not being scammed out of your money, are you? I think it's fine, Lauren. They're a friend of mine. We became friends during our time at university. They've treated me well up until this point. But I don't really understand that, though. But now that your husband's gone, they might take advantage of you and suck you into something you shouldn't be involved in. 
I think it'll be safer for you to stay with your parents because they can help with everything. Even so, I still want to stay in my house. I'm capable of doing a lot of things on my own. It hasn't been that long since we moved into this place. I can't just part from all the memories of my husband that we made in this house yet. Look, I am sick of you not taking my advice. You need to hurry up and leave that house. Uh, Lauren, are you okay? What's going on here? Why are you pushing this so much? Okay, Bonnie, I'm just going to come out and say it. I don't really want to, but I want to say you're so stubborn and never listen to me. I think it's all your fault that my brother is no longer with us. What's that supposed to mean? Are you seriously blaming me for the death of my husband? You think it's my fault? Haven't you been giving my brother a lot of grief recently? If you as his wife truly looked at how he was feeling, he wouldn't have gotten so sick. You should have noticed something was wrong with him because his body looked so thin and weak. But when he left home in the morning, he looked the same as usual. I heard that he suddenly became ill at work. There was nothing that I could have done about his condition. There must have been some sort of sign that you didn't see, Bonnie. If you can't even notice changes like that in your husband, then haven't you failed as a wife? I'm sorry. He said that he felt fine, and I always kept a close eye on him and his physical condition. I would rather not hear your apologies. Just give me my brother back. I don't even recognize you as his wife anymore. You did nothing to save him. You need to return home and never come back. I understand that it's something that you're feeling right now. You're right in the sense that I should have kept a closer eye on him. Maybe I could have seen something that would have prevented him from dying, but I didn't. But that's besides the point. I can't let go of this house. Why are you being so stubborn right now? After everything you've done to this family, how could you act like this? A house is an important asset, Lauren. My child will suffer if I don't have this asset. I'll protect this house for the sake of my baby. The house is also a part of my brother. Besides, my parents were the ones that paid for the deposit. You know that, right? I do know that. There's a reason for them doing that. Which means that this house truly isn't yours to stay in, especially if my parents helped you both out. Lauren, my unborn child is also a keepsake of him. His blood will run through this child's veins. Are you going to take a home away from his child? My husband wouldn't want that happening to his unborn child. Don't you dare use your unborn child as a shield. You're a complete coward. That child doesn't matter to me at all. You don't care about it? Even though it's your brother's baby? Your niece or nephew? I've got no compassion for the child since it's also half of you as well. I want to see it disappear somewhere along with its mother. So you want me to disappear so that you can have my house all to yourself? Is that it? And what's so wrong with taking my brother's things? They should be given to his family, right? I'm not giving you this house, Lauren. I'm going to protect my husband's things. I'm his family too, and I was his wife. I can't let you do this. So I found that some sort of oil was sprinkled at my front door. You didn't happen to do something like this, Lauren. I haven't got a clue what you're talking about, Bonnie. But it must have been you, since I know it was you who put graffiti on my walls the other day. It was super difficult to remove. Like I said before, Bonnie, I've got no idea who targeted you like that. Well, you seem to be the only one who wants to get rid of me. You're the one who wants me out of this house. Is that what you think? Well, if you don't feel safe being there with all those things happening, shouldn't you leave? You better hurry along and go back to your parents' house, no? And give birth to your child there. And then you intend to take over the house while I go back home, am I right? That house is mine because he was my brother. I'll inherit all of my brother's things. As you should know already, the house belongs to his spouse. That's me, Lauren. You've got no rights when it comes to that house. You're the one who took my brother's life away from him. You're still going on about that? I never knew that you were so devoted to your younger brother, Lauren. The love between siblings isn't really something witnessed by a lot of people. Yeah, but it's not like you or my husband interacted much. It's quite surprising how you're so desperate for my husband's belongings. 
If you've got something that you want to say, Bonnie, why don't you just come out and say it? Fine, I will. You act like you cared a lot about my husband, but all you really want is to steal my house, right? What's that supposed to mean? Why would I need to steal what's rightfully mine? This is where we're different, Lauren. I love my husband. I supported him when he was having a difficult time. I'll not give away anything to anyone what my husband and I have worked so hard to obtain. After my husband died, I lost the will to live, but I'll continue to fight to protect this house from your grasp. You're going to fight me over this? Up until the other day, you were acting like such a delinquent by not doing as I say. And I'll continue to be this way. As my due date approaches, I feel like I've gained a lot of strength and want to live for my baby. I've got to fight for what my baby deserves. Oh, so you're just going to treat me like I'm the bad guy? You are the one that took my brother's life away. Indeed, I take responsibility for not keeping an eye on his declining health. I really thought that he was okay, but I guess he wasn't. But the illness that killed my husband was acute. There was nothing anyone could have done to save him. The doctor said that it would have been difficult to predict his chances of living. Don't you dare open up all that crap again. My brother's lifespan had been shortened dramatically because he married a woman like you. A woman like me? What's that supposed to mean? Enlighten me with your thoughts about who I am. You were hardly at home till you got pregnant, weren't you? You told people you were working, but really, you were playing around, no? I wasn't doing any such thing. Are you really accusing me of something I didn't do? We were going to buy a house, so of course I was working hard to earn some money. I didn't have time to do anything else but work. How dare you accuse me of fooling around? Well, I wonder how much of what you're saying is true. Is that child in your stomach even my brother's child, Bonnie? Of course it's my husband's child. Are you kidding me right now, Lauren? I feel so sorry for my brother that he would even try to make a family with someone who lies to everyone. He got caught in your net, and then he goes and dies at an early age. Why did this have to happen to him? Would you quit putting me down? I'm really starting to get annoyed. Please stop making such negative assumptions towards my unborn child. Look, I was just trying to guess what you've been truly doing. <laughs> Besides, if you're getting angry, doesn't that mean I've hit a nerve? You be careful about what you're about to say next, Lauren. The words you just used are also words that are insulting the memory of my husband. See, you're getting angry. <laughs> you're hiding something. I know it. So you're definitely sure that the child in you is my brother's kid? <laughs> Okay, that's it. I'm done with this. I can't deal with your insults any longer, Lauren. I am done with this conversation. Okay, come on. Wait one minute, Bonnie. I'm not finished with this conversation yet. Well, I am. I'm ending it. I don't see much point in carrying on the conversation if all you're going to do is insult me and my unborn child. I'm really sorry about yesterday. I was being rude and the blood completely rushed to my head. I assume that you still want me to move out of my house? You are being more than rude, Bonnie. You never listen to anyone and you're so stubborn. Of course I want you out of the house. But I don't get it. Why do you want me out of there so much? Can you please tell me honestly what is the reason for this? Oh my god, Bonnie, how many times do I actually have to tell you? It's your fault that my brother isn't here with us anymore. If you did your job of being a wife properly, his illness could have been prevented. You failed as a wife. Um, okay. You also said you think that my child I'm pregnant with is the result of an affair, right? Do you seriously think that? I wouldn't put it past you. It's an absolute possibility that the child isn't my brother's. A wife who uses work as an excuse to not be in the house is obviously suspicious. No matter what way you look at it, it's dodgy. You totally could have had an affair and my brother would have had no idea. That's such a terrible thing to say. I loved your brother with all my heart. I would never cheat on him. How dare you accuse me of that? I guess you really hate me a lot if you're making accusations like that about me and my unborn child. I thought I could class you as my sister that I could go to for anything and be supported. I guess I can't do that anymore. 
My brother is no longer on this earth, and you're not a part of this family anymore. Now get a move on and leave the house. Your parents must be waiting for you at your real home. <laughs> With you out of the picture, I can take over the house. Oh, Lauren, I forgot to mention something to you. The family is looking at this conversation you and I are having right now. Is that all right with you? I just need to tell them what's going on so I can get things in order. Family? What family are you even talking about? Well, it's actually your mom and dad who are reading the messages you've just sent me. Also, my parents came from their house to be with me. Excuse me, what? Are you serious? My parents and your parents are both at your house right now? I was actually thinking of going back to my parents' house for a bit, so my parents came over to pick me up. But I thought, before doing that, I'd catch up with my mother-in-law to see how she's doing. Are you telling me that my parents can see every single message I have sent to you? You showed them our private conversation? Yes, they have. I guess I should have told you sooner that our conversation was being watched. How dare you not tell me? That's a breach of my privacy. You're so horrible, you never consider anyone else's feelings. No, that would be you, Lauren. You really wanted my house, didn't you? Well, it's what my husband left to me and his child. All you needed to do was leave, quietly. But now you're trying to lure my parents into taking your side? Well, your father also said that there was nothing that could have been done to save my husband, but you, you continue to blame me for his death. You know that if I could have helped my husband, that I would have done everything in my power to save him. Are you acting right now? I can't believe this crap you're saying. You're just being like this because my parents are standing right in front of you. What's that supposed to mean? Why would I act out my true feelings about this? It wouldn't make sense. You've got some cheek talking to me like that. Up until yesterday, you were so angry. Because I was desperately trying to fight back. My heart was screaming so loud. I just wanted it all to stop. I needed to stop you saying such cruel things. I just wonder why you've got so much to say. Stop making up lies. I haven't done anything. You're not as weak as I thought you were. You're the one who's fabricating information to make me look bad. I've had enough of it. Saying things like my child was made during an affair? Really, Lauren? How could you sink so low? If you really doubt me, then I'll do a DNA test, shall I? Uh, I don't know. What's happening with my parents, Bonnie? How are they reacting? Well, of course they're furious with how you're treating me. They said that you're being disrespectful and heartless. What the heck? I'm allowed to say how I feel. Are they seriously becoming allies with you now or something? Why are they being like this? I'm their daughter. They should be on my side. This is despicable. I am outraged. Why do you always act like the cute, innocent one in all situations? The cute, innocent one? What's that supposed to mean? You're the one who's treating me like crap, Lauren. Do you think what you're accusing me of is important? My parents were the ones who provided the deposit so that you could get the house, right? And now they're taking your side? Stop dragging them away from me. Without a husband, you shouldn't be a part of this family. You're nobody to us. Well, my father-in-law trusts me and doesn't want me out of the family. You know, there was a time that your brother never left his room before he married me, right? He was so worried about his relationships with colleagues at work and he got super depressed. What's that got to do with anything, Bonnie? You're going completely off topic. At the time he was about to give up on life, I noticed something strange about his actions and did everything I could to stop him from taking his life. Your parents were really grateful for what I did for him. He was going through a really bad time mentally and I helped him through it. I had no idea that any of that happened to my brother. I was never told because I didn't want to worry you about him. But my husband also asked me to not tell you anything. Because of this, your parents have taken good care of me. My brother didn't want to tell me that he was depressed? Now do you understand what's going on? It looks like now you're standing on the edge of a cliff. That puts you in a really bad position, Lauren. Well, it looks like I'll be going back to my hometown. I just got a message from your parents. They want me to go back to my parents' house right now. What? Really? Uh, did my parents say anything else to you apart from that? It looks like they're going to stop supporting their daughter. 
You're a yoga teacher, right? You want to have more independence, yeah? Does that mean they're going to stop financially supporting me? They can't do that. Not only that, but they no longer consider you their daughter. They can't just do that to me. I was born into this family, and no matter what, I am still their daughter. Well, your mother said that they plan on using up as much money as possible while they're still alive. They don't want you to inherit anything or steal their money like you've tried to steal my house. Are you kidding me right now? They wouldn't go that far, surely. They've got nothing to be angry about. I didn't do anything. You literally tried to take advantage of my husband's death and steal his house from his pregnant wife. Of course they're allowed to be angry at you for that. And your parents consider me as a benefactor since I was your brother's wife. That's a huge problem. I'll never be able to survive if they don't give me any money. How am I supposed to save up for anything? Figure it out yourself, Lauren. You're an adult, remember? You can do everything on your own now since you wanted to be independent. If you want anything, you're going to have to buy it yourself, not get the money from mom or dad. Shut up, Bonnie. This is all your fault. You've made my parents turn against me. Don't you think you've brought that on yourself, Lauren? Get your own source of income. You're a grown-up. Okay, can't we just make up, you know, be sisters again? You know what I said to you was just a joke, right? You want us to be friendly again and be sisters? <laughs> Not a chance, Lauren. You burnt that bridge a long time ago. How dare you? You've got no strength. You rely on my parents to fight for you. You've got no way to survive on your own. I've got a lot of people supporting me, Lauren. I'm allowed to protect myself from people like you. My late husband is the one who gives me strength every day to keep going. <coughs> After that, my baby was born in my hometown. My parents worried what would happen to me, but I still returned to my house after my baby was born. While I was away, my in-laws would sometimes clean the house for me. I heard that Lauren was scrambling to find money since she'd been cut off. She ended up being scammed and was several thousand dollars in debt. Her business was a failure and ended up incurring even more debt. Even when she was lost as to what to do, her parents never lent a hand. Her parents usually come by to my house. They're grateful to be able to spend time with their grandchild. They also want me to remarry whenever I find the right guy. I want to celebrate with them on the past events that happened as they're truly honest and loving people that have helped me through tough times. I can't believe there was someone like Lauren in their family. I'll continue to live in this house that my husband left me and tell my child how wonderful their father was. Hey there, Carol. I wanted to let you know that I'll be going to Judy's school observation day next week. My brother just called me a little bit ago and asked if I could go in your place. <laughs> what? He's sending some ugly girl like you to go in my place? Whatever, that's fine. But be sure to tell all the parents there that you are not Judy's mother, okay? <laughs> um, let me remind you that I'm doing you the favor of going to Judy's school because neither you nor my brother can make it. Most people typically say thank you when someone does them a favor, not insult their appearance. Okay, thank you. There, I said it. My brother said that he had work that he couldn't get out of that day. Can I ask why you can't go? I'm going to a friend's wedding. A wedding? This must be a very long wedding if it's going to keep you from being able to go to Judy's school in the morning. What are you trying to say? Nothing at all. It's just, well... You never attended any of Judy's school events. The track and field day, her school play, the choir concert. You missed every single one of them. And either my brother has to go alone, or he calls me up and asks me to come along with him. Yeah, and how is that my fault? It just so happens that I have plans every time Judy has a school event. It's a total coincidence. Don't you think that you could cancel your plans and give Judy priority once in a while? I understand that you're busy, but I think it's making Judy sad that you're never at any of these events. But all the other mothers are. Get off my back. You're single and have nothing but free time on your hands, but I actually have stuff to do. She's especially sad this time, Carol. She was really, really hoping that you would come. You should have seen the look on her face when she learned you weren't coming. You are so full of it. Judy's a reasonable girl. She's not going to throw a hissy fit just because I'm not going to some stupid school event. 
I think she's just good at hiding how she really feels, especially from you. And I don't think it's very healthy for her to have to keep on bottling her emotions up inside like this. Eventually, all that pent-up frustration and sadness is going to burst. Hi, Carol. I just got back from Judy's school. How was it? I bet everyone was laughing their heads off at you the whole time. <laughs> like... Whoa, I'd hate to be the kid that has to live with that thing for a mom. <laughs> and just think about poor Judy when she saw you walk into the classroom. Did she start crying right away or did it take a few minutes? You're partially right. A ton of people were laughing. At you. Huh? Why would they be laughing at me? More precisely, about half of the room was snickering at you and another third or so was just shaking their heads in disgust. The rest were clearly furious at you. I could tell from the looks on their faces. What are you talking about? Everyone was talking about me at school? Yep. Why? Why would they be laughing or angry at me when I wasn't even there? Ugh, you're lying, aren't you? They were laughing at you, right? No, they were definitely talking about you. Okay, so tell me why. It's all because of the topic of the class today. The kids were giving presentations about the projects they made in art class. Oh my god, I dodged a bullet there. <laughs> Having to listen to a bunch of snotty kids drone on about their stupid art projects? <laughs> I'd rather throw myself off the roof of the school. <laughs> the projects were actually pretty incredible. It was a completely free project, so the kids were able to make anything they felt like. Judy made a picture book. A picture book? Why did she make a picture book? Well, Judy loves drawing and loves books, so she decided that she would put those two interests together and make a picture book. Wait, didn't you know that she likes to draw? Do you actually know anything about what Judy likes? Forget what she likes. Do you know anything about your own daughter? Like, at all? Of course I know what she likes. I just thought it was weird that she made a picture book for an art project, that's all. Like, don't kids usually just draw pictures or make a sculpture out of popsicle sticks for art class? Judy is a very talented girl, Carol. You really should have seen her picture book. It was fantastic. So what does this picture book have to do with me? The title was Who's With Mommy. It was quite an interesting story. That's a weird title. Wait until you hear the story. It's about a little girl who sees her mother together with a man she doesn't know. It doesn't really have a resolution or ending. It's just a bunch of scenes where the narrator sees her mom together with a strange man and talks about how she feels during each scene. That's it? That's not a story. She's been working on this project in school for months and she didn't even write a proper ending? Well, she is still just a child, so you'll have to excuse her for not having the skills of a professional author or illustrator. But the most interesting thing about that picture book was what inspired Judy to write it. You see, Judy wrote that picture book based on her own real experiences. Huh? So, like I said, the main character of the story is a girl who keeps seeing her mom together with a strange man. And every time she sees them together, the two are lying down on the bed together, naked. Oh, and I think this goes without saying, but the man in the story is not the girl's father. Uh, hey, wait a second. I'll spare you the trouble of thinking and spell it out for you. Judy wrote this book about catching you having an affair. Judy really is an exceptional girl. The pictures were incredibly realistic, and the main character's inner dialogue felt so raw and genuine. She went over all the finest details of each scene of the book. The time of day, the weather, the music playing in the background, everything. Are you being serious right now? Is that actually what Judy wrote in her book? The other kids in the room seemed like they weren't really sure what was going on. But let me assure you, every single one of the adults knew exactly what she was trying to say, including me. Oh no. Uh, Judy really read that book in front of the whole class and all the other parents? Yep. And you just stood there and let it happen? Why didn't you stop her? Oh my god, this, th this is awful. I am never going to be able to show my face around that school again. Do you realize what this is going to do to my reputation? The teacher did try to cut her off early and move on to the next student, but it didn't work. She just kept right on going. Judy's words were, Please, I want to read to the end of my story. Since Judy seemed so determined to finish her presentation, I stepped in and asked the teacher to let her continue. 
You did what? You're insane. You're, you're out of your mind, both you and Judy. You've humiliated me. I'll never hear the end of this. What is wrong with Judy writing a book like that? Where did I go wrong in raising that stinking little brat? What did we do to you? This is all your own doing. Judy did nothing wrong by making that picture book, and I did nothing wrong getting the teacher to let her finish it. You're the one who has quite possibly scarred poor Judy for life. Can you imagine how she must have felt catching you having an affair? I'm not having an affair, you moron! What is the matter with all of you? Who takes the words of some dumb child so seriously? She's making it all up. It never happened. Is that so? I don't know. Her drawings and narrations were very, very detailed. I'd say the most likely explanation is that it's all things that she saw with her own eyes and heard with her own ears. There's no other way she could have made something that detailed. I told you I am not having an affair. It's all lies. She made it up. Well, leaving that aside for now, just know that her picture book was absolutely wonderful. I'll tell my brother all about it, too. I think he'll be quite surprised, wouldn't you? In more ways than one. Wait! We can't let my husband know about something as embarrassing as this. It would be awful for me, and him too. He's better off not knowing, wouldn't you say? How about we keep what happened today as our little secret? Did you actually think I would agree to hide this from my brother? I'm telling him about everything as soon as possible. Plus, he explicitly asked me to tell him all about what happened at the school observation today. That was the whole reason I went. You don't have to tell him everything, do you? You can, you know, leave out a few minor details. He's a busy guy too, so he doesn't have the time to listen to all the boring stuff that happened during that class. You don't need to worry about a thing. I'll give him a report for you. I'll tell him everything he needs to know. I'm not going to lie for you, Carol. I'm going to give him a full report personally as soon as I possibly can. As a matter of fact, I think he'd love to have Judy present her picture book to him once he gets home from work tonight. Don't you dare! <laughs> Where are my husband and daughter? I can't find them anywhere. Are they with you? Oh, hello again, Carol. Did you just get home? Typically, when you go out for the day, you don't come home until very late at night. What brought you home so early today? Were you perhaps worried about what would happen when you got there? I have been trying to get a hold of my husband all day, but he's not returning any of my messages, so I hurried home. You told him about Judy's picture book, didn't you? Of course I did. No! You can't keep your big mouth shut, can you? My brother took Judy to our parents' house. Why? It's for Judy's protection. He didn't want her to have to witness the conversation that you're going to have very, very soon. He was getting her out of the house. What conversation? The conversation about your affair. What else could I possibly be talking about? After everything that went down today, are you really going to sit there and pretend that you have no idea why this is happening? Why are you still going on about me having an affair? Give it up already! You were cheating on my brother, weren't you, Carol? How about that wedding you were going to today? Was that all just a cover for you to see your boyfriend? Did you have a nice time together? I'm not lying. I really did go to a wedding. Okay, well then how about you send me a picture of the wedding? I'm sure you took at least one picture of the venue, decorations, food, maybe a selfie with your friend, the bride. I, uh, didn't take any. Really? Not even one single picture? Are you serious? As active on Instagram as you are, I refuse to believe that you didn't even take one picture to brag to your followers about. My phone's hard drive was full. I couldn't take any more pictures. That's why I don't have any. I see. Then give me the name of another guest at the party. Actually, I have a better idea. Give me the names of the new couple. That should be easy to do, right? And it would prove that you really did go to the wedding. Why should I? I don't have to prove anything to you. Besides, I don't want to bother the bride and groom on their wedding night. You are really determined not to tell me anything at all about this wedding you went to. Is that because there really wasn't a wedding at all? No, there was a wedding and it was really nice. You could give me the name and phone number of the wedding venue if you're concerned about the bride and groom's privacy. Call up the venue and ask if there was a wedding for a couple with the same name today. Anything at all will be fine. Just give me any piece of information I can use to verify that you were at a wedding today. Fine, fine, I give up. 
You're right, there was no wedding today. I was lying. I was busy with other stuff. Other stuff? I'm not going to let you get away with weasel words, Carol. You went to see your boyfriend today, didn't you? Yes. And where did the two of you go together? His place or yours? Neither. We went to an amusement park. And how long have you been seeing each other? About two years, I think. This isn't the first time you've skipped one of Judy's school events to see him, isn't it? Have you done this before? Yeah, a couple of times. Unreal. For the longest time, I was completely baffled as to why you never went to any of Judy's school events. At first, I just thought you were an uncaring, uninterested, unaffectionate mother, but now I see that you're actually somehow worse than that. This doesn't have anything to do with you. This is between me and my husband. Now that all of this is out in the open, I want you to know that I never liked you, not for one second. I tolerated you because you were my brother's wife and my niece's mother. But that is all over as of today. <coughs> I have an announcement to make. My brother contacted your parents a little bit ago. What? He called my parents? It was only a matter of time, really. It's looking more and more like a divorce is coming by the second. But why would he call my parents? It looks like they're going to come by our parents' house in the near future. My brother said he wanted to have a discussion about things between both families. I still don't get it. Why would he do that? And why isn't he talking to me about any of this? Do you honestly think that your opinion matters to anyone at this point? I shouldn't have to remind you that everything that's happening right now is 100% your fault. But he's not answering any of my texts or calls. Doesn't he want to hear my side of the story? I'm his wife. Calm down, Carol. You'll get your chance. You'll have plenty of time to give him your excuses once he gets back to your house. I don't want to talk to him in person. That's why I'm trying to get him to talk to me on the phone. What are you afraid of, Carol? Are you trying to avoid getting called out for what you did? Duh! If he took Judy all the way to your parents' house, he's probably really going to let me have it. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty safe assumption to make. But I think what's going to be the absolute worst for you is when your parents come over to talk with him and my parents. Yeah, I realize that. No, I don't think you realize anything. What do you mean? My brother is going to show Judy's picture book to your parents. What? Man, just think about how they're going to react when they hear that Judy presented that book to the whole class and all the parents. The shame and disappointment might give them both heart attacks. No, 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 that cannot happen. You have to put a stop to this. Why? Judy put a lot of work into that book. And she's very proud of it, too. I think it's only fair to show it to her grandparents, don't you? Are you joking? You can't let them see that. Of course I can. As a matter of fact, I'm going to my parents' house for that meeting, too. Someone's going to have to look after Judy while the adults are having their conversation. What am I going to do? I can't let my parents see that picture book. I would die of embarrassment. Uh, I've got it. You have to burn that book. Why should I? You're the only one who can. You have to find that book before your brother shows it to my parents and burn it. It should be easy. You still haven't answered the question. Why should I burn Judy's picture book for you? To protect my good name. Please, I am begging you. At this rate, my family's going to be torn to shreds and my elderly parents are going to be totally humiliated. You're not worried about them. You're worried about my brother suing you for infidelity. That, and since he's going to seek full custody of Judy, you're going to have to pay him child support. I don't want to get a divorce. What am I going to do without my husband? How am I going to get by? Where am I going to live? If you were so concerned about losing your husband, why would you go and do something as stupid as having an affair? You knew the risks going into it. Well, I mean, you know, I was bored. I wanted a little excitement in my life. I wasn't planning on getting serious about it at all when it first started. Well, you certainly got your wish then, didn't you? I bet this is the most excitement you've ever had in your life. Anyway, there's not a single reason why I should stick my neck out to help you. You've never done anything for me that would merit me doing something to get you out of the massive mess you've made for yourself. How can you be so cold to me? We're sisters, aren't we? Sisters-in-law, but still sisters. You've got to help me. I don't need any sister who would call me ugly. 
You've treated me with nothing but scorn for as long as I've known you. And now, after all of that, you want me to betray my own brother and help you cover up your affair from your parents? I'm sorry about everything. I'm sorry for calling you ugly. It was all just a joke. I was just teasing you, that's all. Your idea of a joke is telling me that Judy would cry from embarrassment if I came to her school observation day? Yes, that was all one long, elaborate joke. I don't really think you're ugly. It was irony. You're actually really beautiful. So I thought it would be hilarious if I called you ugly because you're not ugly. Get it? Funny, right? I see. Irony. So you actually think I'm beautiful then? I'd like to hear it directly from your mouth. Tell me about how beautiful I am. You're gorgeous. Uh, your clothes are so stylish. Your makeup is perfect and your hair, it's, it's so silky and shiny. I am super jealous of your looks. Is that so? Yes, you're beautiful. So listen, if you do me a little favor and burn that picture book for me, I will do anything you ask me to do. Anything? Hmm, that's pretty tempting. I will work to repay you for as long as I live. I will never forget your kindness. And I'll never be a jerk to you or call you ugly ever again. Hmm, as tempting as your offer is, I still couldn't bring myself to destroy the book that Judy worked so hard to make. I think I'd like her to be able to show her grandparents the product of her hard work, too. I think they'll also be impressed that their granddaughter turned out to be such an impressive girl, despite her mother being an amoral harlot. Carol's parents came by my parents' house a few days after that. And the day before that, I heard a knock at my door, and who should show up but the star of the show herself, Carol. I was wondering what in the world she could possibly want at this point, but she got right down on her knees and started begging me to burn Judy's picture book. Unfortunately for her, the book was already in my brother's possession, so it was already too late for her to do anything about it. After the meeting, Carol and her parents walked out of the room with an absolutely horrendous look on their faces. Carol's father grabbed her by the hair, forced her down on her knees, and told her to confess to every single thing she did to betray my brother and apologize. Shortly after that, my brother divorced Carol. Due to her affair, Carol was left penniless after the divorce, and her parents disowned her and told her never to contact them again. Since her story has made its way around town, I doubt Carol will be able to stay around here for much longer. She'll have to move somewhere else. Judy is the same happy little girl as she always was, and still goes to school with a smile on her face. It seems like the other parents felt so bad for Judy after she made her presentation in class that day that they refrained from gossiping about Carol. They also felt sorry for my brother, too, obviously, so they've never brought it up to him at all. I've also taken on a bigger role in my niece's life than I did before. Oh, and as for that picture book, I don't think they're ever going to throw it away. I asked my brother what he did with it and he told me that he put it in a box way in the back of his closet. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.